All right, welcome back. Uh, Friday feeling. We're coming at you with another episode, another podcast series. Uh, we're essentially, we're just diving deep into the season. Uh, you know, what we're going through uh, day to day, a little bit more insight about, you know, Life University Rugby. And we get a chance to pick up, pick out uh, George's brain, our captain, and just kind of see more insight through that. Um, but today's a special day. Um, we're getting a chance to interview uh, Nike, Palima Roberts, and Julian Roberts. Uh, glad to have them on. Uh, today we're just going to uh, we're going to be kind of diving deep into their mindset, uh, what they're about, where they're from, and you know just kind of get to know them a little more. Uh, before we get into it, we're doing a kit giveaway, a Life University Rugby kit giveaway, authentic jerseys and shorts and plenty of other things. So go ahead to the Instagram rugby page and follow the instructions. I think we just hit a recent post about it. So go ahead and give that a shout. Um, but, you know, talking to Julian right now, Nike's currently unavailable. We'll uh, talk to him in a bit. But uh, Julian Roberts, glad to have you on, bro. Great athlete, even a greater dude, you know, on and off the field, bro. Um, i love to hear more about, uh, you know, your personal story. I know you're from Hawaii. Um, and I know you've moved to a couple places, but you know, I just kind of want to know, uh, you know, how was it growing up? What got you into rugby? Uh, first of all, uh, thanks, Esco, for having us. Um, thanks, Cap, for allowing yes, us sir. to get on that feeling. Um, yeah, like Esco was saying, uh, we're from Hawaii, originally from Hawaii. Uh, we moved to Washington for like two or three years when I was younger. But eventually moved back to Hawaii and uh, then we moved out to Tennessee, I think in 2000, I think it was 2012, maybe 2014. But um, growing up, I think though mainly I was just playing football and basketball. But as soon as we got to Tennessee, that's when I was first introduced to rugby. I think it was my freshman year. Um, and yeah, ever since then, it's been good. You, you played a uh, scrum half, right? Yeah, so uh, my, first, my my whole high school career, I was playing scrum half for my club back home. And it was until I got here, uh, I switched positions. Sir, what, uh, what, uh, what originally got you into rugby? Did you know somebody or did y'all just kind of play? Yeah, so my brother, my brother, um, on the on the varsity football team, our captain was a uh, he played rugby down club. I was like 15 minutes away from our school, and uh, it was actually my brother first that went to play. And I didn't I had to wait like a couple of years because I wasn't old enough. And that's that's when that's when I first started playing rugby. Well, what was your like main difference between football and rugby? Uh, when you first started playing rugby, what what like kept you involved in that rather than focusing on football? Um, I think playing rugby it, it helped me when I was when I would play football. Uh, I know my co my head coach in football didn't really approve of of us playing rugby, but uh, I think it was good as it helped me develop my like my fitness and. Uh, overall tackling and just just the aggression going into rugby and football. Now, did you go to the same high school all four years? Yes. Uh, yeah, I went to Fort Campbell High School in Kentucky. But we did, our school actually didn't have a rugby team. It was like a, just a local club outside of the school. We are a small team, like maybe like 17, 18 players. So then, uh, how did you, how did you get into life, or how did you figure out that you wanted to come to life? Uh, it wasn't until we actually got to practice with uh, Coach Colton and the rugby team during that year. They came up on their way to Lindenwood, I believe. Um, we had a little practice session with them, played a little bit of touch, and uh, my brother got in connection with uh, Coach Colton and some of the guys on that team. 
And after after my brother went, then that's when I kind of knew that I was going to come to life and play my future my future career there. Did you show up all the life players as a high school high school athlete? Yes, nah, sir. No, come on, no comment on that. <laughs> Dang, that's dope, bro. It was dope. a good session, though. So you played uh, – what position did you play in football? I played, uh, like, slot receiver, running back. But on defense, I played uh, free safety. Uh, okay, yeah. so you, you played both sides. Yeah. Come in – like just like our rugby, t- like our rugby team was very small. Our football team was also very small. Okay. Not enough players. And you got to play with Nike. Yeah, I, I got to play with him uh, one year, one year out of my high school career. Oh, okay. Uh, how, how was that? It was fun. Uh, it was always good playing with your older brother on the same team and. Uh, I felt like that that kind of influenced me to want to keep playing with him because it was just I don't know it felt different every time we'll be on the same team but I you know if we're playing pickup touch or anything else then I know they always try to separate us but <laughs> I don't know it's good it's good playing with my older brother <laughs> yeah for sure do you think uh, he'll end up growing the mullet bro. Like you said uh, about the mullet lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I don't know. We'll see where it goes. We'll see where 21, 2021 takes us. Those blonde tips are coming in nicely. Thanks, bro. Thanks. Yeah. New addition to the mullet. <laughs> you used to have a super long hair coming in freshman year. I remember that. Yeah, I did. But, um, uh, when I came in, there was a there was a lot of hate towards it, <laughs> a lot of uh, making fun of. So that that pressured me to cut it off. That's crazy. Do you regret it? Any regrets, bro? Mm, nah, no regrets. I'm actually <laughs> starting to like the the mullet lifestyle, so it's good. Hey, it looks good, bro. No, but, uh, you know, diving into, like, a bit of your rugby career going into life, uh, I know you you started off. We're in the same class. Uh, you know, seeing you grow has been good. It's been awesome. Uh, coming into, like, I guess, I know freshman year, you got the chance to play and start against Cal. I know that was crazy for you. Um, and then you performing well then, and then – Sophomore year, or was it freshman year you got Mid-South back of the year? Uh, I believe it was my sophomore year. Sophomore year? Yeah. I guess just uh, if you want to talk about, like, how that felt and just the years leading up to it, like just your mentality, your process towards taking on rugby, especially as a freshman or or sophomore, like underclassman, um, you know, where was your mindset at? And how did you um, how did you approach these high level games? And also, how that award feel too? Um, the award uh, at first, I was kind of shocked when when I found out, um, but it was it was definitely an honor to win that award. Um, I I'm not really big on like personal success. I like I like if the team if the overall team is winning, then. I'm still happy about that, but it was still an honor to win that award. Um, yeah, uh, going going into that sophomore season after winning that award, I think. Uh, well, actually, I think it was this year. Just going into that season, um, I definitely feel like I had a lot of pressure behind on my back, just to to uh, make sure that I'm I'm still playing the same and producing the same way that I was when I won the award. Uh, but my mindset going into my freshman year and, and sophomore year, it's, it was always the same. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I was playing. I was playing my all. I was doing my job right, and uh, 
Yeah, I think except for one game, I maybe I maybe like slipped up a little against it. I think it was against the Navy. I had a terrible game. But every every game after that, uh, I was just always in the same mindset, making sure that I was doing what I had to do and not trying to do too much, but just still listening to my teammates, um, making sure, listen, talking to the coaches, getting some advice from them. And I think George, George helped me a little bit as well when he was, uh, when he was injured. Yep. But I, he gave me some good, some good pointers being in the back three. So it was, it was definitely good having him back me up and the rest of the team being at a young age. Yeah, definitely, bro. I feel like, especially coming into it young, being able to just want to grow and learn from everybody, I feel like that's crucial, especially, like, when you're trying to get better. I think if any athlete that comes into a sport that's kind of cut off from people telling them what they could do better at, they kind of just shoot themselves in the foot. And I feel like you did a good way of, like, learning from everybody and just staying humble and working. And it paid off for sure. Um, do you feel like uh, you've kept the same mindset coming into this uh, next year? Uh, I think, what, what is your mindset? No, <laughs> because of COVID, uh, I think my mindset actually changed. Um, actually, when we went on that break, uh, I actually kind of took it as a as an actual break. Um, I wasn't really doing anything. Uh, I was I was barely working out and trying to stay in the game. Um, but after after coming back from uh, the seven month quarantine, I think my mindset it switched on as soon as as soon as the team came back together. Uh, everything was back the same, and it just felt good coming from a long time not playing or being able to play rugby. Do you feel like you have a different role in the team this year compared to your first two years? Yeah, I, I think for sure that I do. But I don't really like to lead, like, like to tell people what to do. It's just more of, like, me showing an example of, like, uh, what do you say? how I want people people below me to look at um, just like my effort and practice just being uh, like an overall good example of what what the standards here we have at life is and just making sure that the younger guys know what that is during that uh, the COVID break what you and uh, Nike find yourselves doing? I know I heard y'all pretty good at uh at COD. Yeah, we we played a little <laughs> bit of Warzone, Call of Duty Warzone. Uh, I think that's usually what we always played in that little break. Uh, played a couple with George, got a few dubs, but nothing too serious. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Now, do you feel like uh? As far as going into a new role here, do you feel like you've been able to do that successfully? Or where you feel like you are now? Say that again? My bad. I didn't hear you. Yeah, yeah. So like your new role, uh, like what you just mentioned, um, you know, kind of leading by example. How do you feel like you've been able to do that now coming off COVID break? And I guess now that we're in winter break, um, you know, I guess, how do you feel like you've done during this fall season that we had, we only had three games, but we've had a couple of practicing and weightlifting sessions. Um, how do you feel like you've been able to lead, I guess, by example? Uh, I think I've been good for the most part during this time that we've had um, in the weight room, you know. I mean, everybody's not, everybody's not perfect. And uh, I think, when when it, when it's work time, then it's work time, and I get everything done. I make sure that everybody else is being held accountable for getting their stuff done. But you know, we have some 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 play time here and there, 
but it's good. Uh, I mean, uh, for the rugby side of things, I think just my overall game, just showing what I can do is just a pure example of like what, what people can watch and, and feed off of. And I think the younger guys, they all look at that and think that that's 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 what that's how it should be done. And I think I've been doing good for for the most part leading into the season. One thing I love playing alongside you is your enthusiasm for the game. Even when you know whether we're playing against in a practice game or or against you know against the men's club, I know I've never seen anyone get as more up for that kind of game than than you did. Um, and it's a pleasure playing against. So, you know, having that enthusiasm for this team going forward, what 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 are your expectations for for this season? You know, should everything go ahead as normal? And do you have any specific games that you're looking forward to? Uh, yeah, I think uh, the most important, the most important game I'm looking forward to is definitely the Lindenwood games. Those are always a uh, close games. But from looking back on last year and losing to Arc State, I think uh, that that'd be the more the more uh, what do you say? the more the most the most uh, forward I'm looking to is the Arc State game, just because what they just the result of what what happened last year. I'm definitely going to bring it and be the same, being influential and just being that, that charge that everybody needs when we play. Yeah, bro, I 100% agree that, that that's what you are. Like, even when we're lifting, bro, like the energy you bring, you know what I'm saying? I love having, having you as a weightlifting partner. DJ uh, as well. DJ. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah no just on the field and practice you know when we need a good uh pick me up or you know when we need someone to you know make a play i know you're there so i mean you're doing a great job in my opinion appreciate it appreciate it yes sir um i know that uh i mean we pretty much covered covered a lot um do you feel like you have any uh advice for, I guess, the freshmen and sophomores this year on our squad? Uh, yeah, I think my advice that I'll give to the younger guys on our squad, even like younger younger kids growing up wanting to play rugby at the high level, um, is just keep the enjoyment in the game. Just making sure that whenever, wherever it is you're playing is that you're enjoying it and it's not just something that you have to do and it's not fun at all. Um, and just believe in your skills, believe in your abilities. Don't look at, don't look at anybody else. Just be yourself when you're playing. Just do you. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Heck yeah, bro. That's good, nice. dude. Yes, sir. Um, I mean, we'll take a quick, Quick little break and love to hear from Nike, bro. But thank you, dude. That was good. Yeah, pleasure. Thank, thank you, you bro. That. It's a pleasure. See you, bros. All right, we're back. Uh, continuing uh, diving deep into, uh, you know, Nike and Julian's uh, mindset and just their ideas towards the season and where they grew up, just getting to know them better. Um, love to talk to you about, uh, you know, your personal story, bro, and, like, where you where you were raised, and I know Julian mentioned he y'all from Hawaii. Um, mm -hmm. Just in your personal uh, idea towards it, I guess how was it, uh, you know, in Hawaii, and how that kind of shaped your mindset towards life, I guess, in your rugby career. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I was uh, born and raised in Hawaii, um, but I was, I'm a military kid, or me and my brother are military kids, so. We got the opportunity to move to different places, uh, different states. Um, but majority of our, our life, we lived in Hawaii. So, um, yeah, that, um, like uh, in, in Hawaii, it's not much different from 
the other states, I, I'd say the, the biggest difference is there. it's more of, um, well, uh, I'd say the most uh, cultural thing is their, their food. Um, and, you know, a lot of people enjoy food. And if you do get a chance to go to Hawaii, you'll, you'll get to experience the difference in the culture of their, their food. And, um, and there's a lot of other things, so like dance, dancing and stuff like that. It's a, that's a big cultural thing in Hawaii. Um, but, yeah. Where, where in Hawaii are you from? Uh, so we lived in uh, Makakilo, Hawaii. Uh, that's in uh, the island of Oahu. Um, we lived there for like 16 years, 17, 16, 17 years. Um, but, yeah, that's, uh, that's the main uh, – not the biggest island there, but it's more the, I think it's the most populated one out of all. You mentioned uh, the food. I know I've been to your, to your place a couple of times eating some good barbecue. Uh, did your parents uh, barbecue a lot growing up? Is that where you learned how to cook? Uh, yeah, so uh, another, uh, so my ethnicity, ethnicity uh, so we're Samoan. Um, so in Samoa, the men cook. And so I grew up, uh, my dad was cooking a lot. And uh, we always we always barbecued every weekend, um, go to the park, go to the beach, uh, barbecuing. And um, yeah, so I grew up a lot of, lot learning how to cook for my dad and, um, and my mom as well. Um, because my dad, whenever he was deployed, uh, my mom was taking care of us and uh, chefing up some good food. So yeah yes sir yeah it always tastes fire at your place bro uh you feel like your uh small culture really shaped like your values now or do you feel like oh yeah of course um yeah one of the biggest thing in, in in the Samoan culture is uh is respect and um you learn that at a young age and uh being brought up you get taught a lot of lessons um and uh from what's right what's right and what's wrong and yeah, we definitely. Uh, if uh, if you ask a, a lot of Samoan kids on how they grew up, they'll definitely bring a lot a lot of stories of how they were disciplined. Um, so, yeah, respect is a big thing, and uh, yeah, that's probably one of the biggest thing in our culture. I hear that, bro? That's good. Sounds painful though. <laughs> <All right. laughs> no, I'm just playing. I I grew up in the Mexican culture too, so I got I got yeah. to feel that too. <laughs> but uh, no, that's dope, bro. Um, I know uh, Julian mentioned that y'all played uh, in Kentucky football. Yep. In rugby. Yep. Uh, how was your football career? Uh, so when I moved the. Uh, to Kentucky that was my sophomore year um I was just getting in when their season was ending uh so I didn't get to play football until my junior year um but I started as a uh, running back slot and I played safety um but my football career in high school was was pretty good I had some college offers after uh, my junior year um but uh, that's when I also got moving to Kentucky House or Tennessee. I also got um, uh, introduced to rugby from my, some of my football teammates. And uh, it was uh, originally it was just so we it was a way to get out of uh, the offseason training for football. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had lifts after school from like three to five. But nobody wanted to lift for three to five. So we wanted to go play rugby instead. And um, so the off season was our, our rugby time. And uh, so that's how I got to play rugby. And then, uh, yeah. That's dope. Now, who, I know you kind of brought your brother into rugby. Who kind of taught you rugby? Was that your, your parents or who oh, brought nah. you into it? Yeah. Um, nah. Uh, I mean, rugby is a big thing in our in, in like the Samoan culture, uh, but no, my parents didn't play. Uh, my dad didn't play rugby. My grandpa did play rugby though, 
um, growing up, he played rugby and uh, cricket in Samoa. Um, cricket, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I, yeah, I, uh, I learned rugby here in, uh, well, in Tennessee. So was, uh, I knew about rugby, like growing up, but I, I never actually tried it and actually played uh, organized rugby with a team until I got to Tennessee and, um, yeah. We, we asked your brother what, um, what influence football and rugby had on him. And so I'd, I'll ask you the same question, like growing up playing football and then getting into rugby, what was kind of the differences and what was kind of the crossover, the, the impact it had on you? Uh, I think uh, like it's a different uh, bonding um, when you're, you're playing rugby. Uh, I know that for football, you, you do get that like, that kind of team bond, but I felt like I got more of a a brotherly bond that I got with my teammates playing rugby, and um, uh, in like the physical aspect, I think rugby um, shaped me to be more physical. Like physical, I I got my tackling technique better playing uh, rugby. Um, my fitness. Also, there's different uh, footwork going in playing uh, f football and rugby. I think rugby definitely um, can help kids um, if they're uh, kids here playing uh, football in the U.S. Uh, if they give rugby a shot, they'll definitely have some better footwork going in and they can take that into football. So both both sports help, help out each other. For sure. Um, so you played uh, rugby sophomore year high school? And then led up all the way to going to life. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, the club that we played for in Tennessee, we had a, we had. Um, so it was a mix of high schools. It was a mix of like four or five high schools, and we only could bring together like uh, enough players to make one team out of that all those high schools. But there was one player, uh, Daniel Castagna. He uh he came to life, and um that's when life uh, I guess that's how life came to Lindenwood, or uh, to stop by where we were at mm -hmm. um, before they're going to Lindenwood, and they got a little run through um, with us, and then that's how I met some of the life guys. Um, and I spoke with uh, I was speaking with Cody Melfi and Kevin Lynch, so those were the first two guys that I got to speak to. Um, nice. Life, Julian, was, yeah. Julian was pretty modest with it. You, are you going to give us the truth of what happened on that day? Were you, were you <laughs> killing him? Were you running around him? Oh, uh, man. I was a, I was a referee. <laughs> <laughs> I heard there's a lot of ankles left on that field, man. <laughs> oh, geez. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, – so going into life, I guess being uh, – you know, the oldest between you and your brother. Uh, did you have anyone in Atlanta that you knew? Or were you walking in fresh, new, like, not uh, sure what was going to happen? I was walking in fresh. I knew – oh, no. Actually, I knew uh, Dan Castagna. Um, that's the only one I knew uh, coming in. Um, yeah. How was it playing under Coach Lawrence in your first year? Oh, uh, that, that was amazing. Uh, I really enjoyed um, playing under Coach Lawrence. Um, he gave me some good, uh, like, mentorship, and I learned a lot of things, not only in rugby, um, and just just uh, things about for life in general. Um, so I, I, I really enjoyed playing under Coach Lawrence. So you, you – this is your fifth year here at Life, right? Yeah, yeah. For me, and I know you've got to, you've experienced uh, many different teams and many different players. Uh, I guess going into I guess your mindset towards a little bit of this year, how do you feel like uh, playing with all those different teams has helped you? I guess be a leader this year. Um. Yeah. So when I first came, I was I got to play with a lot of like. Um, a lot of seniors. So when I came, there was a lot of seniors. 
Um, and I think that was the same case for me when I was a senior last year. There was a lot of seniors. Um, but I, I, I started playing with all these great players uh, like Cody Melfi, Harley Davidson, Alex Mon, um, Harley, Harley Wheeler, uh, Xander. Um, so all those guys were like uh, leader figures to me. And I looked up to those guys. Um, and I actually, Sam Kelly was my mentor. And he, he, um, he was always on my case, uh, make sure I was good with school. Um, but from, from that year, it, it progressed to my sophomore year where uh, my sophomore and junior year where I was playing uh, um, with Brian and Damo and all those guys. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to learn a lot of things about leadership uh, but I'm not the type, um, like my brother said, he, by example, and that's kind of, that's kind of what I, I like to do. Um, but my mindset coming into this year, being an older guy, uh, I really try to, um, improve my leadership and work, work on my vocal aspect, I guess. Uh, and just being more encouraging, um, for the younger guys. For sure. Good ass, bro. And uh, you mentioned uh, how Sam Kelly was on your case. Do you feel like you struggle with anything regarding like school or like rugby going into this your freshman sophomore years? Uh, what was that? Did I struggle with anything? Yeah, like were you uh, were you good on like your class the cl uh, class aspect of school or because oh, no, uh, you've always been like. From what I've known, you've always been on your on your on top of your game with classes yeah, and whatnot. No, it, it wasn't more so uh, like um, getting on my case like bad for for bad things. It was more uh, checking up, keeping me um, making sure I was on on top of things. Um, uh, yeah, it wasn't uh, a bad thing. Yeah, but uh, I talked about a little bit of your grades and classes because. I know that you're a uh, all academic all American. Yeah, sir. I didn't know that either. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. That's big time, bro. <laughs> but yeah, I know. Congrats, dude. I know. Uh, just from the times I talked to you, you've always been a good example of like how you lead on the field and in the classroom. So it's been good. Um, do you feel like uh? Do you feel like, uh, you know, playing with everyone from the your freshman year all the way to this year uh, kind of made you want to stay an extra year? Or what was your mindset towards staying next extra year? So, uh, uh, it wasn't the guys. So, it was nothing. It had nothing to do with the, the guys that I played with that influenced me to stay another year. Mm -hmm. uh, it was more of um, for 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 my future. Um, I felt uh, I didn't pl uh, perform to a standard that I wanted to. Um, throughout my years, I feel like I've been uh, average. I say uh, so. This year was for me to kind of build up. Um, uh, what's it? I don't know, just build up my player card, I guess, um, just to improve my skills um, and and, it, and also improve um, being a leader since I, you know, I had another opportunity, um, thanks to coach, to, to do that. And I, I didn't I, I didn't take advantage of that uh, last year when I was a senior. So. Now, for everyone listening, when he says that he feels like he was average, you got to understand that this dude is a beast. <laughs> and what he's talking about. Yeah, there's, he's being real humble right now, but this guy is a beast. And you definitely know when he's on the field. Uh, no, but I understand that, though, completely. I know you – I thought and for sure was confident that if you had went into MLR draft, you would have been drafted. So, just <laughs> – but heck yeah, we got another year, another opportunity. Um, how's your shoulder feeling? I know that kind of had an impact on, you know, how everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so 
No, my shoulder's good, actually. Uh, had surgery a year ago. I think a little over a year ago. Uh, uh, what happened? Rehab. I, I So my sophomore year, I dislocated my shoulder against Lindenwood. That was my third third or fourth starting game for varsity. And I dislocated in the first half and I was out um, six, seven weeks. And um, so I had a choice to have surgery then or just rehab it and, and play at the the uh, end of the season, um, playing the playoffs. So I decided to go the route of just rehabbing and, and strengthening. And then I got a chance to play in that final um, where we first played Cal. Um, so I, as a leader on the team, I mean, you, you know, last year and, and then coming into this year with a smaller um, senior group, how do you feel the, the fall season has gone? I think the fall season uh, went pretty good. Um, we started off, I think this is the first time I've ever been in a situation where there's been a more uh, like incoming uh, recruits um, compared to the upperclassmen. Um, but no, the, the, these recruits that came in, all the young guys that came in, they actually really surprised me. I, I didn't have, they actually exceeded my my expectations of what the fall was going to be. You know, we started off picking up our pattern and um, our style of play real quick, and uh, by the end of of the fall, we uh, played the men's club, and um, I was really excited to, for um, keep uh, excited to keep building and uh, see what we have in store for next year. Sure. Yeah, bro, that's good. Shoot. Um, I know that you're also in, you know, the leadership leadership team as well. Um, you you were in it for you. It's been two years now. One year. One year? Oh, okay, one year. Uh, so background there, we have like a leadership team within the like a rugby veterans, Breton side that we come together and kind of like just give some opinions and and uh, help try to lead the team to where it needs to be, but George and Nike and uh, Keegan, um, and then there, it just breaks down from there. Um, so how do you feel like you've been able to uh, have an impact through that platform? Um, I, don't, I don't know how, uh, uh, because I'm not on like, the receiving end of, of it. So I don't know. I can tell you that, uh, I, I've been um, trying my best and trying my hardest to, uh, you know, lead from with uh, the leadership that we have. I think this this year, coach gave us some um, uh, some leadership um, broken up into different parts of the game, and I really like that um, being uh, from leading the attack with you yeah <laughs> um, but it's really cool to have that uh that player aspect and then we get the feed in and actually get some feedback from coach and just having those uh weekly meetings on whatever aspect that we all uh, lead so uh, i just really enjoyed that yeah and i know i'm definitely looking forward to you know hopefully the season coming up and like yeah. good, get in get into that with you in the attack plan. Nike, was your was your mindset any different from any other year going into a season with the difference of you being in the leadership group, whereas you haven't been in the past? Uh, yeah, as I'd say my mindset is a lot different this year. This year, this year I'm more, I've, I'm more determined and just more pumped up to, like, not only play, but to actually um, play for those that, that – I'm leading it. Hopefully, I played it and uh, set a good example for the guys that are uh, for the younger guys. And uh, again, I asked your brother this earlier. What 
you know, are there any specific games that you're looking forward to after Christmas? And, and what are your sort of expectations for this season? Should everything go ahead? Uh, you know, as usual, we, we always look forward to our big rivalry games. And that's uh, Arch State and Lindenwood. Um, so, yeah, those, those, my answer is the same. Um. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen after Christmas, but how did it feel playing in the centres with your brother for the scrimmage in the men's club game? Oh, uh, it's, all, it's always nice playing uh, with my little brother. Um, I feel like we got a different uh, type of chemistry when we're on the field together. So I really like um, playing next song. Shoot, heck yeah, bro. I mean... That was good. That was a good conversation. I think uh, we could pretty much end on that. I mean, it's good uh, picking your brain and, you know, just being able to see you work and see uh, your determination this year has been nice. And the fact that, you know, you've been able to play with injuries and overcome them and recover just shows a little bit about what you're about and your heart and what you want to carry with this team and the standards that you hold. So it's been nice uh, hearing from you, you and your brother. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure people. having you on. Um, yes, what, one, one closing remark: Have you got any anything that you want to give advice for? You know, kids growing up thinking about getting into rugby, everything like that. Uh, you say that again. Have you Have you got any like closing remarks about? Um, you know, any influence you want to have? Any Any advice you want to give to kids growing up? thinking about getting into rugby, wanting to come to college and playing rugby, things like oh, yeah. that? Um, yeah, just stick to stick to what you love to do. Um, when you play this game, you'll have a lot of fun. Um, one thing I can say is uh, play with confidence and you'll succeed. Uh, if you don't believe in yourself, you won't, you won't be able to find success. So just whenever you play um, – just really believe in your, yourself and play with confidence. That's good, bro, 100%. Um, heck, yeah. Uh, last shout-out for the kit giveaway. For those uh, listening, uh, just go on the Life University Rugby page uh, and follow the instructions. We just posted, uh, you know, what we're doing, how you could receive the kit, and, you know, we're just trying to imp uh, grow our impact uh, around this campus and around the collegiate rugby area. So thanks for listening, y'all. Uh, tune in next Friday. And thank you again, uh, Nike and Julian, for hopping on. It's awesome. Yeah, thank you, thank you for having us. Yes, sir. All right, yeah. Thanks, y'all.